Yes, now our topic today is insecurity to confidence. Okay. Now, this is a topic I'm very familiar with. I have experienced a lot of insecurity in my lifetime. And I have, I wouldn't say I'm completely over it, as we all, I think, experience insecurity at different times about different things. But, um, Thankfully, God brings us through and um, helps us. And so today we're going to look at, look at it. And we're going to look at first some of the symptoms of insecurity. Have a look at these and see if any of these, you think, if you can see any of these in your life. Okay. Do you ever find yourself second-guessing yourself? or some of the comments that you've made. Maybe thinking, oh, I really shouldn't have said that. Oh, oh, I really shouldn't have said that. Or, or I should have said that this way. Or they're gonna think I'm so stupid saying that. Or, oh, that's just so, oh. Or worrying that you did something wrong. And thinking, oh, oh you know, that's, people are gonna think I'm really stupid or I'm really silly or, you know, it's, it, does, it just doesn't make sense what I, what I did. Or trying to please everyone. You know, just saying yes to everything. Has everyone, anyone been in that situation where you just say yes, just, just for the sake of saying yes? Just because you're frightened of people thinking that, um, you know, for whatever, that, you, you, that um, you're not able to do things. Or that you, you're not wanting to be involved. There's lots of reasons why people um, will say yes to things, but one of them can be from insecurity. Um, also, um, from... I'm going to move this down a little bit because I can't sort of see what I'm looking at. I might be short, but um, where he's put the microphone, I'm, I'm having to look over the microphone. Let's <laughs> try a different technique. There you go. That's... That's better. Yes, I'm even that short. <laughs> All right. The joys of being short. <laughs> there are some advantages, don't worry. <laughs> okay. Um, another one of the symptoms of being insecure is lying. Lying to impress somebody. Or lying to make you, yourself, um, you know, to, to, to deflect from maybe what you are not good at. Anyone, ex, you know, that relate, anybody relate to that? Or you can, I have a tendency to be, av avoid things. Now, avoidance is a funny one because avoidance is sort of like connected to fear in a sense, but it um, it's, can be an, a symptom of insecurity in the sense of you can avoid, be avoiding stuff like avoiding, um, avoiding a situation that might, might make you feel uncomfortable or avoiding a um, confrontation because you're afraid, really, the fear, this uh, sort of can lead to fear of being exposed, really, exposed of being exposed that, hey, you're, you're not really good at something or, or that you feel that you're not good at something, more likely. Also, boasting can be a, a symptom of insecurity. Like, and you're looking for affirmation. Like, um, you know, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really good at, at driving. You know, I'm really good at driving, even though every time you get behind the wheel, you feel like you're going to... You're shaking in your shoes. That's something I don't know anything about because I don't drive. But anyway, <laughs> um, you could be um, also unable to receive constructive criticism. Um, be very defensive. You probably experience that from different people at times. You just say, "Oh, um, you know, oh that how you did that was it was good, but maybe you should try." Um, you know, maybe you should try doing it this little, this bit better, or this this way, or you know, maybe you should um, maybe you should put um, another 
oh, I don't know, if you're, if you're, like if you're baking a cake or something, maybe you should try and decorate it um, with a little bit more frosting or a little bit less frosting. And they're like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I've put, I've put way enough on. And not being able to accept a tiny bit of criticism. That can be a symptom of insecurity. And this other one is needing fleeces. This is another tricky one. It's really doubting God's goodness. Needing fleeces. Um, this is something I know a lot about. <laughs> um, I have experienced this a lot in my walk with God. I'm very much like, um, I call him my mate Gideon. We're going to talk a lot more about Gideon in a minute. But me and Gideon are going to get on really well when, we get to when I get to heaven. I'm going to have a really good conversation with him and I think we're going to get on marvellously. Um, I've had um, many times in my life where I've done what Gideon did. If you remember in, um, I've just got one, um, one other verse that I haven't got up there that I'm going to quickly jump to and read it. It's in, from Gideon, no, about Gideon, and it's in Judges. And it is Judges 6, verse 17. This is talking about Gideon and his fleeces, basically. One of his fleeces, what, what he would call as a fleece. What it talks about Gideon's fleeces is, is a, in the story of Gideon, part of the story of Gideon is he puts fleeces out on the ground, literal, literal fleeces, um, and waits for the rain to pour on them if God, if he wants, if he thinks God wants him to do something, and he, it's like, well, if God, if you've really said this, then you'll make this, you'll make it rain on this, or you won't make it rain on this, and he does things like this. But this is just one example of one of the one of the things that he says about um, a particular section. Now, every, basically, this is every time. This is basically God's uh, Gideon's attitude to God. When he, so Gideon replied, if now I have fav found favour in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. That's really what the crux of Gideon's whole attitude to God in this whole situation. He keeps throwing things at God. It's like, well, is this really you? Is it really you? Have you really said what you're saying? Is it really you? Can I trust what you're really saying? It's like he's insecure about believing what God's saying. I've experienced that a lot. My one clear example is when I first became a Christian, I was very, very um, nervous sort of person, very, very quiet sort of person for various reasons. And I felt God saying, I want you, as soon as I became a Christian, I felt God saying, I want you to write some songs and get into music. And I'm like, no. No, you've got the wrong person there. No way. So God started waking me up at 3 a.m. with songs going through my head. And you know when God wakes you up, because when God wakes you up, you wake up completely awake. Has anyone experienced that? You're not half asleep, you're just automatically right awake. Wide awake. And he kept doing this every single night till I started actually getting up and writing things down. So at first I was like, okay, God, I'll write this down, but there's no way I'm going to turn this into a song. And there's no way I'm going to actually sing this. I'll write it down, but if you want someone to sing this, someone else is going to sing this because I'm not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. And over time, God kept showing me little bits and pieces, little bits and pieces, and I kept having to show God and say, okay, God, is this really you? So that's how I really believe um, I'm so much like Gideon in that sense. I even wrote a song that said, why must I be so much like Gideon, always searching after a sign? Okay, so we're going to talk about Gideon. We're going to have a look at Gideon now. And we're going to go to Judges. Um, 6 verse 1 and 2 and if I could get um, uh, Tiani to read that one for us please do you hear that one little word there what did they make for themselves strongholds yes 
Okay. So, how might a stronghold have been formed? Let's um, turn to your couple of people around you and you know, turn into little groups and have a little two-minute discussion on how do you think being in that situation, you're in Israel and you're in that situation where you're under the oppression of the Midianites for those seven years, how do you think some strongholds may have been formed? And thinking, thinking about this, Gideon's in the middle of this. Thinking about Gideon. We know that Gideon's a bit of a, a scaredy pants, in a sense. How do you think this might have affected Gideon? Yep, everyone's on the right track. I had two ideas and basically it sort of fits into every, what everyone said, it sort of fits into these and it's like basically God had abandoned them. They felt like God had abandoned them. It's like, where are you, God? You know? And because of that, they were hiding in the caves. They felt they didn't feel like God had, there was no protection there. They felt like God had was no protection from God again. Um, and that made them feel insecure, which it would. If you think yourself, if you feel, if you're in a situation and you feel like God's abandoned you in that situation, um, you wouldn't feel very secure at all. Um, and I guess that's where a lot of us, before we became Christians, would have experienced a lot of those situations. Before you know the love of God, before you know the feeling of, of God's security. Um, some situations can be very scary. Um, okay. So, um, if I can get... Um, Okay, Kevin, if you could read through, read verse, um, Judges 6, verse 7 to 10 for us. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet to the children of Israel who said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all who oppressed you and drove them out before you and gave you their land. If you want me to read yeah. the text, one oh. Verse 10, yeah. Also I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites, whose land you dwell, if you have not obeyed my voice. Yes. So basically, that's just, it's God's response to what they were doing. They sort of hidden away in the caves because they had um, what they had done was turned away from God. God had told them not to bow down to the gods of in the in the land that they had, had gone to, and they did it. They did it. They had basically, um, yeah, they, they had um, bowed down to, um, so they come to demonic conclusions about what was happening around them in the sense of they were, they sort of thought, um, well, this is, they believed sort of the lie that this is really bad, that these things are, that these people are going to, um, that these people are so big and they're so bad and they, they're going to kill us and that nothing can save us and that God's just gone and left us and, and we might as well just hide in the caves and just give up. They had let the ideas of the, the insecurity just take over. They forgot about what God had said. How many times do we forget about what God has said when we're in the midst of a crisis? It's easy to do. We need to come back to what God has said. Come back to what God has said. So if we can... Um, we go to um, 
um, I might too. Yeah. So really, from from that, um, so that they, those demonic conclusions that they came to is sort of really what a stronghold is, isn't it? Isn't it? A stronghold, really, when you get down to the crux of what a stronghold is, and this is any stronghold, not just this stronghold, a stronghold really is a lie. A lie that we have believed. That somewhere in our brains, whether, we have, whether we're believing it on a conscious level, like we're, we're believing it all the time, but somewhere in our brains we have believed a lie about something that has that has gone wrong and we have believed a lie of the enemy and we have let that fester in our systems and just yeah that is really what the crux of a stronghold is and what is the opposite of a lie truth so what do we need to do to get rid of a stronghold Bring truth onto it. Who's the giver of truth? God. So yes, we need to look at things how God sees them. So it's <coughs> excuse me. Okay. Um, I might have to. I might have to. Yep. Can we only please read um, 2 Corinthians verse 10 to verse 5, please? It talks about lofty pretension. You know what lofty pretension is? I'll get Leone to read it and then see if someone who, um, has any idea. What do you think lofty pretension is in that context? Anyone? Yep. False, false things and lies that go against the knowledge of God. Yep. Those ideas that we that we have buried, even sometimes buried in our in our minds about situations. In this case with Gideon, it's the insecurity, the think the thought that, oh God's abandoned me. Here's Gideon. Um, hiding in a wine press, and he's not—he's not in a wine press doing um, pressing grapes in a wine press. He's in a wine press fiddling around with um, wheat, trying to um, press wheat in a wine press. You don't use—you don't use a wine press to—to to, um, I don't know much about getting the heads off wheat or anything, but I know you don't do it in the middle of a wine press. But he was there hiding out doing that when God came along and seen him. And so, you know, that these, it's, these things go, get festering in our minds. And it's just, it's not how it's meant to be. It's not how God wants us to be. God wants us to be able to see things from his perspective and see his perspective. So let's have a look at, um, I want somebody to read, I have to get somebody to cue someone up for this one, so I'll get um, Elijah, you can do this one if you want. Um, Judges uh, 6, 12 and 13. Yeah. It says, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why should this happen to us? And where are, the, where are all the miracles? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites? Yep. Hey, that's where God came and found Gideon. In, in that situation, he was in that mindset that everyone else was in, that real, that stronghold of that, that this is just so terrible. But hear what God said. What did God say? Read it one more time, Elijah. Yep, the Lord is with you. I, the Lord, uh, is with you. Is in another version it says, the Lord is with you. That is the truth of the situation. The Lord is with us, regardless of what we are 
feeling or what we see in the situation, regardless, the Lord is with us. That is our confidence. Our confidence comes from how God sees the situation, how God sees us, how God sees the situation and how God sees us and the character of God. That is how we come against insecurity, is knowing our God, is knowing God. So let's... Uh, I did go to the right... Yeah, I did go to the right way. Yes, I did. I don't know how I did that, but I did. I didn't even press the button, it just went. <laughs> See, I don't know much about technology. <laughs> but I do have an issue with, um, I, I must have actually accidentally touched the mouse because I do have an issue with static, so that's probably what happened. But anyway, yeah, I'm full of static apparently. Okay, yes, yeah, so we're looking at God's perspective. God's, God has a supernatural perspective. He doesn't see things as we see them. Isn't that good? You know? I know sometimes, I mean, I mean, I know myself, I mean, I'm, I've got so many things I need to work on. I'm nowhere near where I need to be in my life. Um, there's so many things. Yes, I've come a long way from where I was when I became a Christian back in, oh, 1991, <laughs> which is a long time ago now. But I'm nowhere near where I need to be. I know there's lots of things I still need to work on. And we're all the same. We're all works in progress. But God sees us from a different perspective. God sees what we can be. God sees what he has done, what he has put on our, the inside of us. He sees us as mighty warriors. Every single one of us here are as a mighty warrior. Whether you feel like it or not, you're a mighty warrior. And you might be think, thinking, oh, yeah, right, that's all right for the next person. That's, that's okay, yeah. Um, yeah, that's all right for Betty, but, you know, she's a mighty warrior, but I'm not, you know. Yeah, John, he's a bit of a, he's a, bit of a strong horse. He's, he's a mighty warrior, but I'm not. No? We're all mighty warriors. It's God's perspective. It's his supernatural perspective. He does not judge by appearances, by physical appearances, or even um, even just the appearance of someone's personality. He doesn't judge like that. He judges by the truth of God. Now, if, Leonie, can you go back to Second Corinthians because you were in there before? And can you read now from 2 Corinthians 10, can you read from verse 12, uh, 7 to 12, thank you. Yeah. It sounds a little bit convoluting, doesn't it? A bit back and forward a bit, but, but basically, the crux of that is basically that that's how we see ourselves. We can see ourselves by comparing ourselves to each other. God doesn't see us that way. God doesn't look at, um, at Jay and say, oh, look at him. Look at Jay and, and then look at and look at Gary and say, oh, but but you know, but Jay's so much better than Gary, or you know, but, or, or or Gary's so much better than oh, you know, or or you know, Grace is so much better than Beatty. You know, he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. He's made us all unique. He loves us all individually, and he knows we're all we're all on a on a on our own journey and our own progressive path that he's, um, you know, he's bringing us through together. And it's through having that confidence of, that, of him and his character and knowing that he loves us, that is how we can forget about those insecurities, forget about comparing ourselves to anyone else, forget about... Um, worrying about, you know, whether you're going to forget something when you're up here on the platform talking. <laughs> if you could see my notes, you'd probably think, how the heck is she reading from those? Because I don't have many notes. 
I've just that's something I've done for a long time. It's just sort of just to rely on God. I've, I learned the hard way. You have too many notes, you rely too much on them. But anyway, um, but yes, we have, we have to have the confidence in the truth that God is. It's God's truth that we have to have confidence in. So our confidence comes from the truth. So what's our, what should our response be? No, we may have at times found that we have been judging God. Sometimes we do judge God. You know? We have false accusations towards God. We can be, you know, in agreement with the enemy a lot of times. They were in um, in Gideon's time. They said, Where is God? He's abandoned us. He's left us. You know? Where is he? In that sense, thinking that way is judging God. But we know when you look back, even at your life, not just looking at the scriptures, but even just looking at your life, looking at your experience that you've personally had with God. Look at the times he has brought you through. Look at the times he has touched your life. We know that he has his thoughts towards you are for good. He has a good plan for you. So what do we do? We have to renounce the lies. So if you've been believing that God is has left you, that you know that you've got those insecurities, then Believe the truth, that you have value. You are valuable to God. God loves you with an everlasting love. And your sins are forgiven. If you've, come to, if, you've given, if you've come to Christ and if you've laid your life down at the foot of the cross and you've asked for that forgiveness, he has forgiven you. There's no need to be self-condemning at all. He has forgiven you. You need to accept the truth of that. You have value. And as far as perspective, um, you know, we all have different times in our life. You might think, well, why is this happening now? You know, why, why, you know, why have I lost my job? Why are... Um, why are my feelings so so horrible? You know, why am I, am I dealing with this this health issue or whatever? It talks about in Ecclesiastes about this, there being seasons. God, you know, it talks about this, a season for um, for war. There's a season for this. There's a season for that. God is a God of seasons. He brings us through. There are seasonal challenges that come along. It doesn't mean that it's going to be there permanently. They're temporary. And even in the midst of those issues, we need to trust God. I had a season a few years ago, um, back in 2009, or to that, between 2007 and 2009, we lost four members of my family. Four members of my family died within a period of two years. All from cancer. It was like bang, 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 bang. Funeral after funeral after funeral after funeral. Actually, no, one of them died of a stroke, but three of them from cancer, one from stroke. And that was just a horrendous season. It was a season of loss. And so many other changes that happened at that time. But looking back, God was faithful. God was there. He held me together. He pulled me through. He, there was so many, when I look back now, there were so many blessings amongst all that pain. There are seasons that happen. So we don't get 
bogged down in amongst the, amongst the problems that happen around. We have to have the perspective that God is looking at everything. He just doesn't see like today and tomorrow or yesterday. He sees everything. He knows everything. And we have to choose to trust God's character. God is love. Above everything else, God is love. He does he wants the best for us. He created us. He loves us so much. That's why he sent his son to die for us. If he didn't love us, he wouldn't have done that. If he didn't love us, he would have just gone whoop, just wiped us all, wiped it all away and said, no, let's start again. You know? I think sometimes I think uh, we, you know, a lot of us would probably think, well, if I was God, I probably would have done that. Just, you know, let's just start again. You know? When you look at humanity, the way things are. Um, but God is so loving. But he didn't do that. So let's, so let's, our responses is just to accept the truth, accept God's character, and trust him. So let's just, um, you know, we can pray. We can pray. And just, um, let's just pray and just um, ask God just to um, just thank him for his, his love and his acceptance. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you so much, Lord, for your love. Lord, and we thank you, Lord, that it's in you that we have our confidence, Lord. The Lord, that confidence comes in no other package but you, Lord. That our confidence does not come in the things that we own, all the things that we do. Mm, praise you, Lord. Lord, we just love you so much, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. We just ask, Lord, that you would just help us, Lord. That if we are feeling like we are, if we have this stronghold of insecurity, Lord, if we are feeling like we are insecure in any sense, Lord, if we don't feel like we are enough, if we don't feel like um, you love us enough, if we don't feel like we are seen by you, Lord, to let's combat those lies and say, enough. No, I believe that my God is a God of love, that my God loves me, that my God died for me. Praise you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, and we just ask that you would just, um, just touch us, Lord, and just um, give us your, um, just give us a reassurance, Lord, of that, that you love us so much, Lord. And ask for your healing to be upon these people in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And just pray, Lord, also that um, if there is anybody that hasn't, that doesn't know God, and that you would like to know God, that um, you can always um, email Pastor Jay if you need to, um, and he will discuss that with you. That's good. Amen.